here is the big story, the massive story that you won't get anywhere else in New Zealand. And I want to quote um, from a piece we've now got published in our opinion section that we've um, thankfully republished um, with the um, for, with the kind permission of the New Zealand Centre for Political Research, uh, Muriel Newman's outfit. And it's a piece by Barry Brill. Barry Brill is a former Minister of Energy for New Zealand, former National MP, former Director of uh, Petrocorp, and Chair of the Gas Council, uh, Power New Zealand, the BSANZ. He is currently the Chairman of the New Zealand Climate Science Coalition. And he's published a piece that highlights and looks at a New York Times column which contains the shocking revelation that United Nations modelling and predictions for global warming this century have halved. That's right, halved. Just a few years ago, climate predictions, and I'm quoting from the article here, for this century look quite apocalyptic with most scientists warning that continuing business as usual would bring the world four or even five degrees Celsius of warming. A change disruptive enough to call forth not only predictions of food crises and heat stress, state conflict and economic strife, but from some corners warnings of civilizational collapse and even a sort of human endgame. Very scary. Five, five degrees Celsius, Celsius this century of climate change uh, increase. Guess what that is now? 2.5 degrees. This is from the United Nations itself. 2.5 degrees. Uh, a report uh, from the UN climate, from UN climate change released on 26th of October. Okay, so about a month ago. It says the world is on track for around two and a half degrees Celsius of warming by the end of the century. This is a major change, people. This is, and don't forget, it's still just a computer bloody model, but the five degrees Celsius has gone to 2.5 degrees, and I don't think because you're doing more recycling or I'm not driving the rangey as much. They just got the figures wrong. And uh, here to talk about what that should mean is uh, Barry Brill, the uh, author of this piece that we've published. Barry, welcome to the program. Nice to have you with us. Oh, good morning. All right, Barry, this is, this is such a huge story, isn't it? It is. I, I think it's uh, the biggest climate change story of the last decade. Uh, we have uh, been uh, hearing constant references to five degrees and uh, a catastrophe and climate emergency, climate crisis, uh, and uh, even uh, existential threat to the future of humanity. Uh, now, with a with a stroke, all of that disappears, uh, and uh, the four to five degree scenario. Uh, is suddenly dead uh, and replaced with the United Nations uh, official prediction, uh, which it uh, contained in its 132-page uh, book that it prepared for COP27, the, uh, the International Climate uh, Convention, which is just being held in Egypt. Uh, and the... The uh, official papers prepared for that uh, have a prediction for 2100 on a business as usual basis to 2.5. Uh, and when I say a business as usual basis, that 2.5 assumes that we will do no more uh, new policies from now on. So although there are existing climate policies, we're told they haven't been enough, but if there are no more climate policies, then the models say we will hit 2.5 uh, by the year 2100. 
Now that, that's a, uh, a pretty modest figure, the, the two and a half degree. Uh, the uh, Paris Agreement uh, in 2015 aimed to get us to two degrees. Well, obviously we're almost there. Wow, so the crisis, the climate emergency is over, Barry. Certainly the, the emergency is over. The attempt to continue to uh, uh, reduce emissions, uh, I've no doubt that will carry on, uh, but at least we won't be hearing uh, these hair-raising stories uh, in that the, what we're aiming to do and what we think is going to happen is only a half degree difference over a period of 80 years. Barry, this is massive. Why aren't I reading about this and stuff and seeing it on TVNZ and News Hub? This, should, this is like the end of World War II. Uh, it is. It, you know, we should be declaring victory and dancing in the streets. Uh, I, it, it's, it's a strategy that's been adopted by uh, those who... Uh, uh, who helped to orchestrate the worldwide uh, propaganda on uh, the, the climate and the climate space. But those are usually uh, newspapers led by the New York Times. So the New York Times and The Guardian and uh, The Economist uh, provide the, uh, the guardrails, which... They, their talking points are almost always repeated by our television stations, the Herald and, and our other media. Um, but uh, there's been dead silence uh, on, on this topic. Nobody's attacked it. Nobody said it's not true. They just have said nothing at all. Wow. Um, and, of course, it must be difficult for them, given that outfits like stuff have publicly declared that climate, the science has decided on climate change and they will not publish dissenting views, they've kind of backed themselves into a corner of not being able to report this very significant story. Uh, yes. Yeah, there's going to be a loss of face, particularly for people like Stuff who whose attitude would have been if that I had written them something say it won't be four and a half degrees, it will be only three degrees, if something wouldn't be published because it would be regarded as misinformation. Now their legs are taken out from under them entirely by the United Nations itself uh, coming to this you know, official uh, publication um, predicting only 2.5 degrees. Yeah. And then in getting there, according to uh, Wallace Wells, the, uh, the person who wrote the, the, the lengthy mea culpa uh, article in the uh, New York Times, uh, the, the changes have been that they have, uh, the UN has dropped its, uh, its, highest scenario mm -hmm. uh, known as 8.5 or representative concentration pathway 8.5 uh, and, and, and not only that but they've dropped their second highest scenario of uh, 7 as well now focusing on a pathway which is only 3.4 and these, these numbers uh, are measures of the amount of warming expected in the year 2100. So uh, the amount, the previously we had a range which was headed at the top by this extreme case of 8.5, uh, and we now have a likely case, and that is less than than half of that at 3.4. But it's a concern that 8.5, which has been regarded with great suspicion by most objective scientists since it was first introduced over 10 years ago, uh, that 8.5 has never seemed plausible as something that could ever happen. Uh, and 
now. I mean, taken off the table entirely. Now, that causes a, a, a significant problem for the New Zealand government in particular, because probably to an extent more than any other, uh, our uh, Ministry for the Environment and NEWA uh, have used 8.5 centipedes. Uh, for most of their calculations. So, so uh, the problem we've reports. got, Barry, is that all sorts of groups, mainstream media included, are so invested in the catastrophe of climate change that they are now stuck with, if you like, in a situation of cognitive dissonance as they do not know how to stop, well, essentially lying about these consequences. But I would have thought, Barry, this requires, therefore a fundamental rethink of our uh, carbon zero uh, goals of planting out our, our, our arable farmland into Pinus radiata, this requires going back almost to the drawing board on climate change policies because we're there, we've arrived, and we don't need to keep kicking hell out of our agricultural sector or beating ourselves figuratively over the back uh, 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 over our backs with, you know, with birch sticks. Yeah, yes, quite. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I think, uh, John Milton Keynes is often given credit for the, uh, for the quote that says, when the facts change, I change my mind. Uh, what do you do? Uh, and uh, I would like to put that question to Minister Shaw. The facts have changed. Shouldn't you change your mind? Whereas up till now, he's been very silent on the whole topic. Barry, look, some people are going to come back at you and say you are a shill for the oil industry. Tell us about the New Zealand Climate Science Coalition. Who funds it? Just so we can head that one off at the pass. Well, it's really a... Uh small collection of mainly scientists. Uh, we have engineers and uh, some other professionals who are part of it as well. And it is uh, a sort of minor think tank. Uh, we uh, keep up to date on all the changes that are occurring in, uh, in climate, but we fund ourselves. We don't raise funds from the public. Uh, we have never seen a, a, a dollar from uh, the oil industry uh, or from the renewable uh, energy industry for that matter either. Uh, so there isn't any funding issue arising. Uh, the, uh, and we have been concerned and have argued for some years that 8.5 was a ridiculous scenario and we've also argued that the climate sensitivity figure has been too high. Uh, our media over the years runs the same story of shock horror every day. Uh, it never advances to say, well, now, how much climate change do we expect? Uh, and how much damage will that do? And what is the, the science on feedbacks? And uh, all the, the other things that would have improved the, the uh, public education a little on the areas of dispute that are in dispute everywhere um, between the uh, the alarmists on the one hand, uh, the lukewarmers, I probably put myself in that category, who believe the theory but believe that it's quite a trivial impact. Uh, and then there are others who don't believe the theory uh, and uh, or and or believe that it's so small that it's overtaken completely by other activities. Now we don't have that debate, uh, and so it must come as a huge shock to our climate change establishment uh, when uh, the the predictions that are made from the the one uh, the one source of uh, of facts. Uh, uh, they cut it in half and say it's, it's only half yeah, as bad yeah. as we And, thought. of course, there's the possibility it could go down even further. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I think there's a good possibility that it will go down to two. And uh, 
the, and I won't go into the detail of that because it's a bit technical. But the fact is, the difference between the two degree target and the 2.5, which is now predicted, yeah. uh, is pretty small because we, we act as if we have very accurate uh, predictions or very accurate measurements, let alone predictions in our decades into the future. Yeah, but in, in fact, there's big error bars around all these figures. So if you say two point five, well, I, I would say this is yeah. one point five. Barry, degree. if we have made the massive and painful changes to our economy, to our agricultural sector, to our lives as a result of predictions of climate change, when those predictions drastically change like this, we must revisit those decisions. There just seems you to know. me it would be crazy not to. Yes, and I, I also wonder if uh, the uh, plans that have assessed the risks to people who live close to the coast and who may have to migrate their houses away from the coast, yeah. if that has progressed further and those people resist, then we're going to find ourselves in court with them, with a string of experts pointing yeah. out that this 8.5 is gone, it's no longer adopted anywhere, uh, and uh, James Shaw and the government trying to say it doesn't matter that 8.5 is gone, it doesn't matter that the... Uh, well, it does, because the... the it's yeah. And how can they win that case? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear you, Barry. Barry, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning and thank you very much for writing that piece and I'll be honest, <coughs> until I read it, I just didn't know of what I think is the biggest news story of the year. I thank you for your time. That is Barry uh, Brill, former Minister of Energy, former National MP and Chairman of the New Zealand Climate Science Coalition. So you heard it here <coughs> and do you recognise... How significant this is. The United Nations, which kind of sets the pace on doom and gloom predictions for our planet, has halved its expectation of global warming uh, in the next, what, six, uh, 78 years. Halved. So essentially the planet is not, not that it ever was burning, Climate change is no longer what some, like, you know, we Greta would have said, the end of the planet, not that it ever was. But the science and the figures themselves tell us there is no emergency and there is no crisis. And the stuff we are doing right now that damages people's lives and livelihoods is unnecessary. It is just woke virtue signalling, and our mainstream media should be telling you this. But they won't, because they drank the Kool-Aid of climate change until it was coming out their ears. And they're now stuck in a position where they are probably too full of themselves to admit that, th and I'm not saying they were wrong, the facts have changed. The science has changed. Science is never settled. The United Nations has halved. In the last month, a month ago, the United Nations halved its prediction for climate change around the globe. We should be having a party.